Oh, it's been about, what, I want to say six months since the last time I did an episode of the GB Gaming Podcast. And uh, not for lack of trying, I've just not really had time to sit down and talk shit for an hour and a half, so I said to myself, I'll take a break from it for a while, because it's not something I don't, I didn't know it was something I wanted to continue doing, but uh, (laughs) more things have happened over the last few months, and I thought, I might as well start taking notes and uh, just build up topics to talk about and then just regurgitate it onto the microphone. Because when I talk about things, I generally don't think about keeping it to myself to regurgitate it on a podcast. I always talk about it to friends, I always talk about it to family, I always talk about it to my partner, my fiance. So I don't really... Um, I don't keep it to myself to then let it all out on the podcast. So I've decided to do that this time. I've decided to just build up all this shit, write all these notes down. I've created a mind map on my phone. uh, And it's basically just... Mind maps are... I don't know what mind maps are used for, specifically. I don't know what they should be used for, mind maps. It's like... But I found out... Like, it's a good way for me to keep track on what I'm talking about. Instead of, like, when I have a mind map on my phone, like, when I have notes written down, it's this long list of shite that I have to keep scrolling through to find the topic I want to talk about. And with a mind map, I can just write down topics and then separate it and then write down another topic and then separate it. And then before I know it, I've got this this graph, this diagram of topics all over the screen. And all I have to do is just grab one, put it in my brain, so to speak, talk about that, then cross it off in my head and then pick the other one and talk about that. That's how I use the mind map on my phone. It's on, uh, I have a, I just recently bought a, a Xiaomi uh, Mi 10T Lite or something like that, I think it's called. And I've never bought these phones before. I'm a Samsung guy. I've been buying Samsung Galaxies for the past six years, I want to say. And before that, I had a Nokia Lumia, which is basically a Windows phone. And before that, I had a Sony Xperia. And before that, I had a... Oh, uh, what was it? It was an LG Beauty Snap. Now that was a an old phone. So I, I, I didn't really have a brand loyalty until I started using Samsung phones. And I loved the Samsung brand for a while, but now it's getting to a stage where the, these big brands are getting more and more expensive as the years go on. And I'm not a big phone guy. Like, when I say that, I don't look for the best phone. I will never pay more than 200 quid for a phone. Well, I'll, I'll try not to spend more than 200 quid for a phone. So I'll, I'll buy, I bought, I found this Xiaomi, it's a fairly newish brand, I think. I don't know when they were established, but my sister swears by them. And they basically do everything that an Android phone would do on a Samsung, and almost just as good, for a fraction of the price. So if I went to buy a Samsung Galaxy S, what, 10? I don't know. That's about 400 euro over here. And I found this phone, which is a Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite. And it's, and it was 250 euro. Or it was 230 euro with 30 quid being added on because of Brexit. You know, that import charges. And uh, so I bought that. And it's, honestly, it's the best phone I've ever had so far. That that goes without saying, because my last phone was a Samsung Galaxy S6. I had that for about almost maybe three years, three and a half years. So the decision to upgrade and buy a new phone came from when I was trying to use my banking app on my Samsung Galaxy S6, and it told me to upgrade to Android 8 or above and my Samsung Galaxy S6 wouldn't go past Sam, uh, Android 7. So I'm like, well, here comes the obsolete, here comes the the obsolescence, if that's a word. Here it comes, here comes all the shit. 
being incompatible because the phone's too goddamn old. And it's not like a, it's not like an Apple situation where it's planned obsolescence. If that's a word again. I don't know if that's a word. Um, where they deliberately make your phone slower so that you'll go out and buy the next phone. I don't think it's that with Samsung. I don't want to believe it is because that phone done me for a good three years and it was it was pre-owned as well. It was used when I bought it. So it, 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 it had a fair share of use. Um, but this whole, like, your this application is no longer compatible on this version of Android, it would have annoyed me if it was one generation of Android lower than the new one, if you get what I mean. I don't know what the new version of Android is. I'm going to say it's Android 11. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. But if I had Android 10 and it stopped working, then I would be annoyed. But it's Android 7. I got to upgrade. So this is the first new phone I've bought since the Windows phone. It's the first time I've bought a brand new phone and it's plastic with a warranty in a long time. And it feels pretty good. It's huge. It's a big phone. It's the Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite. And I'll probably put a link in the description on what the phone looks like. Now, I don't really like uh, telling people what phone I'm going to buy because for some strange reason, it you'll never you're never going to get someone who's on the same page as you when it comes to phones. You're just not, you know. Like I, every single time I go in to get a phone, I've always got someone who tells me, "Don't get that phone. Don't get that phone. Don't get that phone." Why not? Because you had one bad experience with it. Don't buy that phone because I had it for three years and then it went slow. Don't buy that phone. That's like me telling you not to buy the Samsung Galaxy S6 because it started going slow by the end of its tenure. But it's it's obvious that it's going to eventually go slow, but that's not a reason not to buy a phone. And I don't really agree with buying new phones because they're usually 500 to 600 to goddamn 1,000 quid. And I will not fire money on that, like, no chance. I shouldn't have to take out a loan to buy a mobile phone. That's all I'm saying. And paying the money I paid for this phone, even though it's stretched past my limit, it's probably the best 260 euro I've spent, because it's a damn good phone. It's fast. The battery takes fucking days to reach 0%. It comes with a fast charger built in. Built in, sorry. I mean, it comes packed with a fast charger. It comes with a screen protector already on it, and it's not one of those peel-off screen protectors that you get when you buy a phone for the first time. No, this is an actual screen protector that they've planted into this phone out of its factory packaging, and that's brilliant. I have a... a I bought... A, 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 a shatterproof screen protector already for it and I haven't gotten to use it yet because I don't need to use it yet because the screen protector on this is doing its job. The only complaint I have about this phone is it, it collects dust on the screen really easy. Now I don't know if that is the material of the screen protector but I'm not about to peel it off and replace it to find out that it's not that. A quick simple wipe with a t-shirt and it's fine but it's not a big deal. It's got four lens on it. It's a good phone. It's a really good phone. I'm really enjoying it. Um, but, okay, enough talking about phones. If you've just joined me, welcome to the GB Gaming Podcast. This is Dave talking to you on GB Gaming, where video games come first. And uh, I've got <clears throat> a lot to talk about. And it's not just video games. I've decided that this is my podcast. So I'm going to talk about whatever I want, but I'll always make sure to keep video games as the main topic if I can, but I'm going to use it to regurgitate as much as I can on various topics, air my grievances, talk about random shite that has no uh, relevance, really, you know, 
And that's what I'm going to try and do. Because even though video gaming is a major part of my life, it's my favourite hobby, it's what I love to do on a daily basis, I don't always get into the nitty gritty of news articles surrounding video games. I don't always look at them. I tend to go in blind with video games. As I stand here right now, talking on this microphone, on the 25th of April 2021, I have no idea what new games are coming out between now and June, except maybe one. I have no earthly clue. No idea. Because I'm not really looking at it right now, because I don't have a PS5, I don't have an Xbox Series X, and that's where all the games are being pushed out towards at the minute. That's the main talking point. I can't join in on that conversation because I do not have either of those consoles. So I can't talk about it. But what I can talk about is what games I do know are coming out, within the next couple of weeks. I've got one in particular that I'm waiting on coming out next Friday. And uh, games that I've been playing. Games that I have recently completed, beaten. A few articles, a few news pieces on video games that I am going to talk about are things that I've seen a lot of people talking about on social media. Like Sony's fucking storefront on PS3 and Vita closing down and then being reversed which is going to lead me talking about Jim Ryan as one of the most annoying video game people out there one of the most annoying for reasons that I will get into later on so I've got a lot to cover and I'm quite excited to do it because I love talking shite. I love talking crap about random crap. I love, I love, I just love chatting shit about anything. And if I, (laughs) if I don't talk about it on this, I'll be talking about it to my fiance who doesn't want to hear it. Or she'll hear it, she'll acknowledge it, but she won't give a fuck. So I won't, I won't bug her. I'll bug the microphone instead, and I'll bug anyone who decides to listen to me. If anyone does. But, uh, God, people annoy me. They do. People just bug me. And the type, there's, there's, there's types of people that bug me. And one of the types of people that bug me are defensive people. People that don't know how to behave when they are met with criticism. Or not so much criticism, but just, and it's not so much arguments either, but just friendly debates. They can't take disagreements. They get aggressive or defensive or whatever. They don't like it when you correct them on anything. You know? Like, I could talk to someone about something, like, say, The Last of Us Part 2, for example. We all know that that game won Game of the Year. We all know it. A lot of people thought it should have been Ghost of Tsushima. I personally disagree that Ghost of Tsushima should ever have won Game of the Year. Because it does nothing new in my books. It didn't do anything uh, groundbreaking. It did a couple of mechanics that are unique, like the the weather-based um, navigation, where... If you need to go somewhere, if you're if you're going towards a side mission or a story mission, instead of an arrow telling you where to go or a map showing you where to go on the radar or anything like that, no blips, instead of that, you get the wind in the game going in the blowing in the direction of where you need to go. That's how you navigate in Ghost of Tsushima. That's a unique mechanic. I like that. But everything else. It's like, I knew how to play Ghost of Tsushima the second I started playing it. Do you know what I mean? And see, when you know how to play a game like that, that means it's familiar. That means it's been done before. And it's been done so many times from games like Assassin's Creed, Mad Max, uh, Days Gone, which I'll talk to, I'll talk about shortly. 
and uh, the Middle Earth Shadow games. You know, those type of open world games. It's been done so many times. And in that respect, they haven't done anything new. And therefore, I don't think it should have won Game of the Year. I personally think The Last of Us deserved Game of the Year. Because it comes from a biased opinion. Not biased, but I really loved The Last of Us Part 2. Say what you want about certain story uh, story tropes or, or plot points that they decided to boldly do. By this point, you've pro- you probably already know, but I'm not going to mention it here. But certain characters and certain events happening in that game was very div- divisive. And I like divisive. I like having a debate with someone. And... When I debate it with people, especially when it comes to The Last of Us Part 2, I don't get it. It's like, you're not allowed to talk about The Last of Us Part 2, whether it's good or bad, without someone from the opposite opinion giving you shit for it. And it's unwarranted. You don't need to do that. You don't need to... Like, you don't need to talk to me like that. To, to defend yourself or to defend the game that you didn't enjoy or enjoyed. You know, to like, defend your opinion. You don't, you don't need to attack me to defend your opinion. You can debate with me and disagree, and we will agree to disagree. But don't get angry at me. It's not my fault that I... It's not my fault that I like or dislike the game. And it's not your fault that you like or dislike the game. It's nobody's fault, and that's the beauty of opinion. That's the beauty of video games in general. There's always something that people don't like, and there's always something that people like. Likewise, love and hate. And I loved The Last of Us Part 2 because it took bold decisions. I like bold decisions. I was like... What if they did this and they did it? Where does it go from here? I hope there's a part three because I want to see where it goes from the end of two. I really do. Or at least give us an expansion story on certain characters. And you know who I'm talking about. I want to see more of that character. The remake of The Last of Us, you can fuck off with that. That's ridiculous. That doesn't need to happen. But I digress. Say what you want about The Last of Us Part 2. If you believe that it was bad for these reasons, then that's good. It's bad. Don't buy it. Don't play it. You know? Give the feedback if you want. It's fine. The same goes with me. I don't... I like it. I loved it. But do not attack or defend yourself. Or defend it. You don't need to. So when someone comes on and says, I fucking hated The Last of Us 2. It was bad for these reasons. And I come on and I say, I'd have to disagree. I liked it for these reasons. I liked it for the reasons that you said you hate it. That should be it. A friendly disagreement. A friendly debate. That is not your cue to turn round and tell me, to basically abuse me and tell me, you would say that, look at your profile picture, or you're just a fucking shill for Neil Druckmann, or Cuckman as you want to call him, or you you, you would say that because you, you're a pussy, or whatever the fuck. Don't attack me personally. Don't look at my name and immediately use that as a weapon against me as well. For those of you who are not aware, my name is David Cameron. That's my name, right? It's not my fault that that's my name. So why the fuck do you want to look at me and go, oh, you're the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. That means you like to shag pigs. Oh, 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 you're very original. 
I've had these David Cameron jokes ever since I was fucking 16 thrown at me. Ever since I was like 14, 15, 16, I've always had those jokes thrown at me. Right from before he was Prime Minister to when he was during his Prime Minister to after he finished being Prime Minister. I've always had those jokes thrown at me. Don't use it against me in an argument because then you're just being a dickhead. But that's the kind of people I hate on the internet at least. Constructive, friendly debate is met with vitriol. That's what I don't like. You know? And people that just look to say personal attacks, like, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. I mean, this doesn't go by, this isn't just in terms of gaming either. Like, it goes with anything. Like, I, I, I get any arguments with people on Twitter all the time, and sometimes I don't mean to get any an argument. Sometimes I could just say, I don't agree with this, and this is why, and you just attack me for no fucking reason. You have no reason to attack me. What's your problem? What is your actual problem? Do you know what I mean? But, that's the way people are. I guess. I mean, there's another type of... Pe cancel culture. Cancel culture bugs me as well. I know it's... I know it's exhausting to talk about it. I know it's overly spoken about and I know we should fucking ignore it. But it came back again when... For those of you who don't watch wrestling, I'm pretty sure those of you who do knows what I'm talking about, but... You know, Mickey James, she was in WWE for quite a long time. And uh, she was let go from WWE recently for reasons I really do not know. <clears throat> but um, there was a, a photo taken by Mickey James recently of a bin bag with her name on it. And what she said was basically her belongings were sent to her in a bin bag, in a trash bag. You know, and apparently it's like, not apparently, it's fucking obvious, that's really disrespectful. And she posted this, and Triple H, you, you all know who Triple H is, he uh, posted a thing on Twitter. Now, had Mickey James have not said this, this may not have been brought up, but he, he, Triple H came on and wrote, Upon learning of the disrespectful treatment, some of our recently released talent received on behalf of the company, we took immediate action. The person responsible for this considerate action has been fired and is no longer with WWE. Now, they're basically saying the guy or the individuals or individual who had been sending people their belongings in trash bags has been sacked. And Good. Action was taken. And some clown comes into the comments section and writes, Not enough. Not enough. What do you want, mate? What do you want? Someone said, a very clever fucking thing, said, What are they supposed to do? Jump them? They did the right thing considering what happened. That's what he said. And the same guy who wrote Not Enough came back and said, Reacting to a long existing problem, a tweet, that's enough? Let's see it in future actions. Better yet, let's show respect to people while they're still employed even. Now, say what you want about WWE's treatment of their employees slash talent slash independent contractors. They do a lot of shit that, that bugs me. But you can't sit there and like... For all you know, Triple H or any of those people may not have known that this was going on. Because back then, maybe nobody could tweet about it. Maybe nobody did tweet about it. Nobody mentioned it. Do you know what I mean? But maybe because Mickey James posted it on a public platform and that she's no longer with WWE, they can't do anything to her, so they've got no choice but to act. Maybe. But what do you want them to do now? What do you want them to do right now? You, they, they can't do anything right now. You're sitting there saying, 
oh, it's not enough. You need to stop this happening going forward. That's like telling someone, that's like accusing someone of murder before they've killed anyone. That's like stopping a murderer before he's done it yet. That is like going up to Adolf Hitler before he became a dictator and killing him for being a dictator before he was even a dictator. Right? No, don't get me wrong. It would solve a lot of the world's problems in hindsight in that time. But you just don't know. My next door neighbour could be a future murderer and I'll never know. Do you want me to kill him to prevent that? Or should I just let him live and then months and years down the line find out that he murdered 10 people one day? And what? You should have killed him when you had the chance. You can't do that, like. You can't say that. I know I'm stretching with my uh, analogies here, but it's, it's the same principle in a way. You can't take action on people, but like, you can only do what you're doing right now and you can only do your best to prevent it going forward, right? All Triple H can do, and I suppose management, all they can do going forward is the next time someone is sent packing, the only thing you can do there is make an announcement in a meeting or a boardroom meeting and say, do not put them in a bin bag. Do not put their belongings in a bin bag. That's it. That's all you can say. That's all you can do. So what do you mean, not enough? That's ridiculous. That's fucking ridiculous. Ugh. Ugh. Ridiculous. Don't even fucking start. Moving on. Another type of people that annoy me, and I suppose this isn't so much people as people, because people do this. Um, I have a really big problem with noise pollution. Uh, I know, weird segue. It's not even a fucking segue. But it, it just made me think more about things that annoyed me. And noise pollution is definitely something that annoys me. I mean, like... <laughs> how the fuck do we get to talking about this crap? But uh, I want to get it out of the way because I need to air this, right? I mean, do you, does anyone out there like the sound of your entire neighbourhood sounding like a fucking construction site? Because I don't. I really don't. I think it's fucking annoying, you know? Especially on a bank holiday weekend or a Sunday, you know? It's like, I want to go outside and enjoy my garden for a while, but I can't fucking do it because someone next door is doing buzzsawing and shouting and banging and someone across the street is using a fucking jackhammer for some stupid reason. There's a fucking tractor on the fucking field across the road that hasn't shut his engine off for five hours, and there's someone across the road using a fucking cement mixer. Someone's got a fucking scaffolding on their fucking house from round the corner, and someone up that end of the fucking estate is fucking, I don't know, playing the radio really loud. I don't fucking know. Like, I want to relax. I don't want to sit and listen to everyone using every fucking tool imaginable. And speaking of fucking tools, my next door neighbour has been fucking driving me insane since February. And wait till you hear this. Wait till you hear this. He started doing DIY work around February that involved banging, sawing, fucking drilling. Anything you can think of, he was fucking doing. And he was doing it in one room, which is the room that's directly next to this room. So, like, his house is attached to mine. The house is basically the same shape, but reversed. You know how a semi-detached house works. He was renovating the bedroom that mimics this room next door. And he was at it for a full week. And then he quietened down a bit. Maybe doing it once for an hour in the afternoon. But then the following week, he started doing it again. The same room. Fast forward, it's been about three months now, I want to say. Like, where are we? February, March, April? We're coming into three months. And he's still doing it. He's still buzzsawing shit outside and bringing it inside. And the worst case of it was when I was in work... And my shift isn't long. It's only part-time at the minute. So I'm only doing 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock 
that's my shift at the minute because COVID and there's not much work doing it. I'm delighted and grateful to have the work I have right now, but I digress. Um, and my wife to be, my fiance, she does a hell of a lot more hours than me. She does eight o'clock in the morning till 5.30 in the afternoon. And then she's got a 45 minute drive home. You know, so that's up at 6.30 in the morning, leave at quarter past seven, get to work at eight o'clock, leave at 5.30, get home at about quarter past six if you're lucky, if you're not caught in traffic, or six o'clock, I think. And then, um, see, I don't know if it's 5.30 or five, but it doesn't matter. 45 minute drive home, you finally get home, you sit down, you relax, you've got a cup of tea, uh, whatever it is you're doing, you start to catch up on your latest TV show that you enjoy watching, and then all you hear is this. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Now, it's been three months nearly, and it's still going on. And she rang me while I was in work, almost, like, upset. I'm not saying she was crying because she wasn't, but she was annoyed and upset that he's been at it for this long and he hasn't stopped. It's like, where's the line? I'll tell you where the line is. He hasn't crossed it legally. And that's frustrating. As the law states, I think, he's allowed to make as much noise as he wants during the day. And he is, under the, the, the law, he is, like, in the eyes of the law, he can do whatever he wants. And that just frustrates me because he does it from 9, 10 o'clock in the morning till 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the evening. But sometimes he stretches it to 8 o'clock. And this particular evening that I'm talking about where my fiancé came home and sat down to a cup of tea and then he starts banging, she sent me a video of it happening at 7.30 p.m. Who's doing that at 7.30 p.m.? And it's not like he's in the house alone. He has a wife and he has a young child. And she's at home. She doesn't leave the house. Do you know? She never leaves the house, so she's a stay-at-home mother. So how the fuck does she tolerate it? I don't understand. How does she tolerate it? How does she allow him to do so much racket at half past seven at night? I don't know their child's bedroom schedule, bedtime schedule. I don't. But she's young enough that she needs to go to bed at at least eight o'clock. And he's up there. Do you know, it, it got so bad that, that night that she told me about this, um, it was a rainy day. Like, it was raining. And she told me the video that I I heard buzz sawing, and it came, and I and I looked outside when I got home, and I noticed that his buzz saw was not there. He brought his fucking buzz saw inside to use it at seven thirty at night because it was fucking raining outside. Who fucking does that? Who does that? Seriously, I don't know why I'm trying to keep my voice down. Because fuck him if I'm going to keep my fucking voice down when his fucking tools are constantly going off. God! Like I said, noise pollution drives me fucking insane. Another thing that drives me insane in the topic and category of, and the umbrella of noise pollution is... Now, I don't mind hearing the sound of children playing outside. It's normal. Totally fucking normal. I don't mind it. Not at all. It's the sound of kids doing high-pitched screaming that I cannot stick the sound of. Can't stand it. The sound of a child screaming at the top of their lungs that sounds no different to someone getting slit in the throat. Or... No, I mean that's so much slit in the throat. You wouldn't be able to scream if you did that. I don't know, stabbed, shot. You're in a lot of pain. Yet you want to scream your lungs out and there's fuck all wrong with you. Now, I'm prepared to give the benefit of the doubt for 
a child that may or may not have an intellectual disability or something along those lines. If you've got Asperger's autism, you know, if, if shouting is your thing that you can't control, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, take that away from you. I'm not going to, I can't do it. I can't stop that. You can't stop that. That's not your fault. You know, can't stop that. But the thing is, I, 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 with, I don't know how to put this in terms that sounds nicer than what it actually sounds like, but I know what a child with an ailment would sound like, because I've, I just, you, you just know, don't you? But I've looked out and I've, I've, uh, I've examined, if that's the word I'm looking for, I've just, you hear someone screaming and shouting like that, the first thing I'm going to do is look out the window to see what the fucking commotion is. And it's just a bunch of kids playing with water guns or footballs or whatever, and one child is chasing the other, and this child is screaming like he's getting his face barred by a fucking baseball bat with knives attached to it. Will you calm the fuck down? You're only being chased by a water gun. Chill out. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I sound more annoyed than I actually am. It's more of a trivial annoyance. And, uh, wow, I, I love, I love, I love venting about shit that annoys me that isn't even a big deal. I love venting about crap like that. And there is a, a board, a, a thread on a, a website that I am on religiously, and I have been on religiously since 2000 and. I want to say 2011 or maybe less than that, maybe 2009. There is a website that I go on called boards.ie, B-O-A-R-D-S dot I-E. It's an Irish message boards website and it covers so many topics. You can talk about anything. There is a thread for it and it's on that website. And there is a thread on that called, now the naming convention of this thread always changes because you can only have so many um, comments on a thread before it reaches its limit and then you have to make another part. And so far, the thread is called, it's basically called Trivial Things That Annoy You. And they always change the name of it every single time they make a new one. So it's like, Things That Trivially Annoy You, Part 1. Things That Trivially Annoy You, Part 2. And then they just start getting funny and creative with the name. So right now it's called Things Cat Trivially Annoy You Part Whatever. <laughs> and yeah. <coughs> um, I'm on that thread all the time. It's probably my favourite thread on boards next to the Tell Us What Games You've Completed thread, which I love. I love talking about games that I've beaten or games that I'm playing. But uh, no, I'll, I'll put a link on it in the description of the YouTube channel if you're watching it. Um, but it's basically a thread to just air your grievances on something that has just recently bugged you. And it could be anything, like uh, like me with the DIY sound and things. That's annoying to me. DIY is annoying to me. Noise pollution is annoying to me. Or someone says that they hate it when your phone autocorrects when you don't want it to, you know? Something stupid like that. It's literally trivial annoyances. Things that are annoying but don't wreck your life in, in a way. Basically, yes, trivial. I will put a link to it in the description and you can take a look for yourself. It's mostly Irish people that use it because it's boards.ie and I've been living in Ireland since 2004. I discovered it in 2009, I think. Or 2008. I think it's 2008. I've got 3,209 posts on it as I speak. I love it. It's a brilliant website. It's one of my favourite forums to visit. And it's great for airing your grievances, especially that thread. So have a look. Have a gander. Enjoy. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, noise pollution. Definitely hate it. The sound of a resting car engine on neutral. Like when a car pulls up outside your house but they're not going to your house. They're going to the next door, or they're going across the road, or they're coming to your house, but they're not ready to come inside yet, like a delivery boy, you know, or whatever. They park outside your car, and it's... So this is the sound that you hear. Mm -hmm. 
the handbrake, right? Turn your fucking engine off! Do you know what I mean? And like five minutes later, you can still hear it outside. Low rumblings like that tickle my ear in such a way that it is just so fucking irritating. Like, just shut the fucking car off if you're not going to be using it for the next five minutes. You're wasting petrol for a start. I think. I don't drive. I just know that if you keep the car engine running, you're wasting something. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, God. Well. Let's move on, shall we? Let's talk about video games. First of all, let's talk about television shows and films. <clears throat> I've been watching quite a few things lately. Um, I watched the new Mortal Kombat movie uh, yesterday. And as Mortal Kombat films go, it is the best. 100% the best. I've got to let my... I've got to let my nostalgia go for... The 1995 movie, Mortal Kombat. I've got to let that go. I enjoy that film because I grew up with it. I love it because I've always loved it. <clears throat> you know? If that film was made now, oh, it'd be dog shit. Absolute dog shit. It would be one of those so bad it's good movies. And I suppose nowadays it is considered a film that is so bad it's good. And then you've got Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which is so bad it's bad. It's not fun to watch at all. Not for me, it isn't. And the new Mortal Kombat film released in 2021 is a really, really, really good Mortal Kombat film. Takes a little bit of liberties in regards to the lore and story of it, but I'm okay with it. They still kept a few things true to what the spirit of Mortal Kombat is. And they should do, because uh, Tobias and Ed Boon uh, were part of the project, I think, uh, I think that's what I've seen. Obviously, you've got to have the the creators of the source material involved in the creation of something that you're uh, adapting from. So I think um, I think they were involved in some way. But uh, yeah, um, best Mortal Kombat film I've ever seen, and one of the best video game movies I've ever seen as well. Uh, and that's not a high bar in any stretch of the imagination, it is nothing close to Oscar material, you know? You, you'd nearly be damn sure that a video game movie will get a Razzie. The same way you'll expect any fucking film directed by Spielberg to almost get an Oscar. You'll expect any video game movie to get a fucking Razzie. So when it doesn't get a Razzie, good film. <laughs> to an extent. But uh, Mortal Kombat 2021, it's definitely, it's definitely taken a lot of creative liberties with the the plot and story and characters. But I enjoyed it all the same, and I hope that we get a sequel. I hope that apparently it was it had a budget of ninety something million, and it's only raked in about twenty odd million so far, I think. If it can break even and then make more, I would prefer it made double. <clears throat> then we'll almost be guaranteed a sequel. And I hope that we get a Mortal Kombat expanded universe. I don't want just games anymore. We've got far too many games. I want movies. I want TV shows. I want more merchandise. Do you know what I mean? I want Mortal Kombat to be bigger. It's already big, but it's only big in the fighting video game atmosphere. I want it to be expanded on again, and it has by fan projects and whatnot, but I'm talking big budget. I want more big budget things put into this universe, akin to that, <clears throat> akin to that of uh, DC or Marvel. Now, Obviously, it'll never get that big, but I want the same idea put in, like Star Wars, like Avengers, like <clears throat> like DC Universe, you know, like all of that. I want to see more Mortal Kombat IPs everywhere. And I hope that's what happens, because I love Mortal Kombat. I absolutely love it. So if it gets more than just films going forward, I'm all down for that. 
Um, so yeah, I watched the new Mortal Kombat film. I'm not going to talk about any spoilers. I'm just going to say certain characters I wish got treated a little better. Um, and some characters, or maybe one character I should say, I wish didn't really exist. If he was taken out of it, I wouldn't be unhappy about it. He shouldn't have been in there in the first place. But ugh, if you've seen the film, you know exactly who I'm talking about. But if you haven't seen the film and you're a fan and you're interested, go watch it. Go watch it. I guarantee you'll at least be somewhat satisfied when you leave the end credits. Um, I also finished watching Vikings after spending about four weeks binging the absolute fuck out of it uh, from seasons one right through to season six. Um, wonderful programme. Uh, great TV show, not historically accurate. It does just it it just veers right out of that realm of uh, historical accuracy. Now, you could defend it in a way. You could defend it in a way because the Vikings. There isn't a lot of records that are factual about them. This the characters that are in this are based on real people. But there are not the the the, the wishy washy details about them. They, there wasn't a lot of records put down about the great heathen army or Ragnar Lothbrok or Ivar the Boneless. These are main characters in the TV show, and they are well established legends of Viking lore, Viking history. Um, but not a lot has been, like, there's not a lot of records about them. So it takes a lot of things about them that are true, but twists them in a different way. And I'm all right with that. Do you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. Um, I was very satisfied by the way it ended, apart from maybe one or two aspects of it. Um, if you're into any form of history, wars, medieval, if you're even into Vikings in general, it's a brilliant program to, to watch. Uh, one of the best, I'll say, anyway. Um, I also started watching One Piece, the anime. Ugh, that fucking show. I love it. I love it so dearly. Uh, I've just finished, I want to say it's season one, but if you were to take seasons away from it, it wouldn't really matter. It's more eras. It's more chapters that it covers. You know, like sagas. It's not so much seasons, it's more or less sagas. So it's like from episodes 1 to 60, you've got this story. And then episodes 60 to 130, you've got this story. This adventure and that adventure per season, right? It's not seasons as per, as, as what it should be. Um, so, for example, each episode directly leads into the next episode. Every episode is tied together flawlessly, right? You get an episode, it finishes, you can watch the the, the teaser for the next episode if you want. Um, when the next episode starts, you get an immediate, re uh, a quick... Um, recap of the previous episode and then it just continues straight from there there is no time jump there is no like years later at least not from what i've seen so far it is seamless it is continuous and it doesn't stop um and that's what i love about it the characters are very likable minus one or two that i could take take or leave um the main character is brilliant. Love him. His name is Monkey D. Luffy. He is one of the best anime characters I've ever seen on TV. Brilliant character. Well written. He's just amazing in every way. He's funny. He gets serious when he has to. He's sarcastic. He's he's a little bit tone deaf. In a way, he, he doesn't really uh, click to things very quickly. Um, but when things get serious, he gets fucking serious. It's wacky, it's slapstick, it's action-packed, it's, it's drama, it can be violent, it can be fucking hilarious. It's everything I would want in an anime and more. It's absolutely brilliant. If you're into anime 
and you're curious, I'd say go watch One Piece. It's a bit daft. It's stupid, but it's good stupid. It's not anywhere near bad. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I don't watch anime that much. I've dabbled in a few. Like, I've, I've, I've dabbled in a few anime shows, but One Piece is the only one that has really stuck for me. I love One Piece. So, if you're ever interested, go watch it. I will say this, though. From what I've read, it's long. It goes on for seasons. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising considering the fact it's been around since the late 90s, if I'm not mistaken. And it's still going to this day. It's arguably the biggest, probably one of the longest running anime shows in existence. I don't I don't even know if Dragon Ball has been going on nearly as long, maybe just as long. But One Piece has definitely been going on a long time and it hasn't stopped. So I've got a lot of catching up to do and I'm already 65, 66 episodes in. So I think I'm doing pretty good and I can't wait to see what more they have. And the only reason I'm really watching One Piece is because... Uh, I love Dynasty Warriors, the video game franchise. I love it. I love the whole one versus 1,000 mechanic. I, I like all that. It's mindless. I enjoy it. I don't need to think about anything. I just mash the X or square button and I'm happy. It's a great podcast game series as well. You could play that game and listen to a podcast while you're playing it and you don't need to worry about following plot lines if you don't want to. It's just mindless fun. And uh, they've, they've expanded the the series to different IPs and different uh you know different universes so they've done uh, the Zelda universe like Hyrule Warriors they've done Blade Storm with the Hundred Years War they've done uh Fire Emblem with Fire Emblem Warriors they've done Troy uh they've done uh Fist of the North Star they've even done the Sengoku Warring States period of Japan with Samurai Warriors. That's probably the second longest running Musou series. And they've also done One Piece. And I've got One Piece Pirate Warriors uh, 2 and 3. Now, 3 is the one I got first, and I've played it already. But I didn't know who the characters were. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I, I wanted to see more of this IP. So I started watching the anime and I fucking love it. So I can't wait to watch more of it so that I've got more of a reason to go back and play the games. So you could say, discovering One Piece Pirate Warriors is the reason I'm watching One Piece now. And I love it. It's it's brilliant. Uh... That's pretty much all I've been watching TV show-wise. I mean, I watch All Elite Wrestling every week. Well, at least I was watching it every week. Um, I've actually got six weeks worth of... or six episodes of AEW to catch up on because uh, that whole time was spent watching Vikings. So I've got a lot of catching up to do in regards to All Elite Wrestling. I don't watch WWE anymore. I'm not saying it's shite, but it's shite. <laughs> It's not for me anymore. Um, I prefer All Elite. I don't know why. I started watching it from episode one and I haven't stopped. Except now where I need to catch up on four or five episodes. But I'm really enjoying it. So that'll probably be the next thing I'm going to start watching. Um, so, yeah. Going from that to talking about games I've been playing, I guess. Uh, I've beaten a lot of games since January. Uh, oh god, I beat so much. Um, I've beat, I've actually got a list of games here that I have recently beaten, <clears throat> and I'm just going to spout them all out. So this year, I played and beat Resident Evil 3, Ace Combat 7, Gris, or Grease, I don't know how you pronounce it, G-R-I-S, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Streets of Rage 4, King of Fighters 94, King of Fighters 95, 96, 97, 98, Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, Fatal Fury, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, right, the entire Street Fighter collection that came out for the 30th anniversary, I beat all those games. Uh, Shank, 
Shank 2. Uh, those were games that were first introduced on the Xbox Live Arcade and were also released on Windows PC and Steam and all that. So I beat them on Steam. I uh, finally played Half-Life in the form of Black Mesa, which is the Half-Life remake. <clears throat> uh, I beat Half-Life 2. I played and beat Little Nightmares 2. Played Warriors of Fate, which is part of the Capcom Capcom uh, beat 'em up collection. Uh, I beat Warriors of Fate on that. Uh, not my, I liked it, but it was if you took Final Fight and you took the same mechanics and themes, I suppose, uh, graphics, uh, visuals, and you threw it into uh, the Three Kingdoms period you would get Warriors of Fate, because that's basically what it was. It was Final Fight with Ancient China as a setting. And I didn't really like it that much. Not a fan of Capcom beat-em-ups, to be honest. Uh, I'm more of a Streets of Rage guy. You know. Um, finally played Jack and Daxter for the PS3. And the reason I bought Jack and Daxter on the PS3 is because of the whole Sony store closing fiasco which I'll get to shortly uh, I didn't play Jack 2 well I did, I played a bit of it but I didn't think it was as good as Jack 1 so I fell off of the Jack and Daxter series now uh, I beat my first Lego Star Wars game <laughs> I played Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, I beat that and then I visited my mother there about a week and a half ago and now, for the past year or so, my fiancé has been bugging me to try and buy Guitar Hero. Now, I hadn't played Guitar Hero in a long time. I'm talking 2010 or 2011 was the last time I played Guitar Hero in any capacity. I never played it since. Probably 2010, I want to say. Um, I hadn't played it since, so I had a lot of Guitar Hero games and then I sold them all, but I don't know where the, I didn't know where the guitars went until I visited my mum there last week, and on the way there, my fiancé just happened to mention Guitar Hero again, and I'm like, I don't, and then it, get, then it came to me. At first I said, I'm not buying two guitars and a Guitar Hero game, it's going to cost too much money. And they do, they're quite they're quite pricey these days. Um, and then it dawned on me, I thought, maybe my guitars, I had three of them, I think, or two of them, one was my brother's. I says, I think my guitars might still be in my mother's house somewhere. Because I do remember them being in somewhere, like storage like in a closet somewhere. So I went and looked for them when I got there. I mean, how disrespectful. You go and visit your mum after three months and the first thing you want to do is look for your fucking guitars. But uh, no, I went in there and I sat with my mum and my family for a good few hours. And just before I left, I decided to go up into the attic, which is what I like to do every time I go to that house. Just to see if there's any treasures there that I might not have seen in a long time. Like, for example, all my magazine collection. I got all them back. Like, my official PlayStation magazines and all that. PSW. Games Master. And I found... I found my guitars. I found three guitars. Two for Guitar Hero. Um, one was for Guitar Hero World Tour, so it's like the black and light brown one, that the Les Paul, I think it is, I don't know, and an Aerosmith guitar, which was not mine, I think it was my brother's, because he still has Guitar Hero Aerosmith, so that must have been his, and uh, my Rock Band guitar from the game Rock Band. So I grabbed the three of them and said, look what I found, oh my fiancé was so delighted. She was so delighted. She was so happy that I finally found these guitars. That So my stepfather helped me clean them up. They were disgusting. Very dusty. Very They hadn't been used in 10 years. So they were still in good condition after I cleaned them up. They still work. Uh, they eat batteries up like crazy though. I mean, after like four or five days, you need to change the batteries. But that's okay. I've got a short attention span anyway. But anyway, so... 
I got the Guitar Hero guitars and I brought them home. I got, I grabbed, I took, I, I deliberately took my brother's Guitar Hero Aerosmith because he's not going to fucking play that. He won't mind. He probably doesn't even know I've taken it. But he hasn't played his 360. In fact, I've got his 360. So, if anything, I'm doing him a favour. So I took Guitar Hero Aerosmith, I brought it back home. We played, we finally got to play Guitar Hero together. But she didn't, we both came to an agreement, yeah, we don't like Guitar Hero Aerosmith that much. I don't like the band Aerosmith. I don't think they're bad. Their, their music is just not my cup of tea. Now, their music is good, but I don't really listen to Aerosmith. I never really have. So, that game was kind of boring. Playing songs that I didn't really care about, didn't really enjoy. So I got onto Amazon and bought a shit ton of different Guitar Hero games. I got Guitar Hero 2, I got Guitar Hero 3, I got Guitar Hero uh, World Tour, and I bought Guitar Hero Metallica. Now I've had all those games before, my Xbox achievements list can attest to that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I got them all, they all came within two to three days of each other, and we, now we, we've now been playing Guitar Hero every day for the past four or five days uh, apart from today, we didn't play it today I uh, don't think we played it yesterday we might have, but we haven't played it today uh, she's gone off Sunday we don't really play games together on Sunday um, but that's what we've been playing uh, and so when she's in work, I will play a career mode of of one of the games and then when she comes home we play co-op together so I beat Guitar Hero 3 myself uh, on Thursday or something like that, or Friday. And now I've moved on to World Tour and co-op with, with her. So we're we're going through that right now. And, oh, those games. Guitar Hero, what a game. What a fun, fun gimmick that is just brilliant. The, there, I don't really care for peripheral games, but Guitar Hero is definitely probably the best peripheral game I've ever played on any console. Love it. Absolutely love it. They're so fun. They're so enjoyable. They're addictive. You know, people will play Call of Duty and they'll think, oh, just one more match. Or they'll play FIFA and they'll say, one more game. I'm playing Guitar Hero and just before I go to work, I'm like, mm, just one more song. I love Guitar Hero and I didn't realise how much I loved it until I started playing it again. So, that's been the highlight of my week in the last seven days, was rediscovering Guitar Hero again. Oh, what a fantastic series. And uh, I heard rumours, I actually heard rumours recently that they're going to bring Guitar Hero back, funny enough. Now, where did I see that article? Da -da 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 -da. This was three weeks ago. Maybe. Or was it? I don't know, but I did. Da, 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 da. Ooh, no, 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 no. I don't know where I saw it, but it was like one of those things where you discover something that you haven't seen in a long time, and this is world. This is one of world's biggest fucking typicalities or coincidences where you will discover something, and then. It's like in Grand Theft Auto, where you're looking for a car, and you can't find it, and then you find the car you're looking for, and then suddenly everyone's driving the same car. This is what I think with this, is that Guitar Hero was something that I just rediscovered. And since rediscovering it, I ran into an article somewhere that says, Guitar Hero might be making a comeback. Now, I don't know where i seen that now. I can't find it. I can't find it, but it might have been on Screen Rant. I really don't remember. Or was it Rock Band? I don't know. If my history is still intact, it will be here. April the 23rd. Here we go. It says here... Oh, it was just an idea. It wasn't actually happening. Well, yeah. 
people want to see Guitar Hero make a comeback is basically what I'm trying to say. And I agree. I think it should definitely come back. Now, I haven't played Guitar Hero Live. And I haven't played Rock Band 4. I don't really like Rock Band that much. Um, but I will always have a love for the original six games or whatever, how many they made. Um, Guitar Hero Metallica is really enjoyable. I have a brand new love for Metallica. So I started listening to them within the last six or seven years and I've enjoyed them ever since. But I had Metal, I had, I had Guitar Hero Metallica before I became a Metallica fan. So I never played it. But now I'm playing it and I really like it because I'm like, I know this song. I know this song. I love this song. I love this song. It's like when I discovered Rock Band Green Day or Green Day Rock Band. I was a big fan of Green Day when that game dropped. So I played the shit out of that. I know this song. I know. There's, I don't know. There's just something about seeing songs that you really like on these games that just, it hits a, it just releases so much do- fucking dopamine from my brain. I love it. Because this happened recently when we were playing Guitar Hero. It must have been yesterday or the day before where we were playing Guitar Hero World Tour and my fiancé is a massive fan of the band Tool. And we were playing through World Tour and there was this part where you you play different gigs and they're small bite-sized gigs. Like each gig has three or four songs in it. And they're all based on certain themes, countries, or... So, whatever country you play in, I suppose that's why it's called World Tour, whichever country you play in, that's the... I think the bands you play, the songs you play, are from bands from that country, or at least are established in that country. I think that's what it is. But in any case, every now and then, though, you'll come to a gig which is optional i think it's optional because you have to buy it with in-game currency so you don't have to do it i don't think but anyway we found we were playing through it and i just heard my fiance do the biggest shriek of excitement when she found out that there is a gig that has three songs by tool and she loves tool so we at the time we couldn't afford it in the game so we played more songs in the career mode to build up more money and then we bought the 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 tool gig and now I, I don't like tool personally i'm not a fan of tool but i appreciate them Th- their music is not my cup of tea but i understand why people like them and uh, i know they've got fucking freaky imagery on their album art and videos and whatnot so I don't really like Tool, but I know who Tool are. I'm very aware of them, especially thanks to my fiance. So we played the gig for Tool, and it was cool. On Guitar Hero, usually when you play a gig, you see the band that you're in. So you see yourself as the guitar, the lead guitarist. You see someone who's playing vocals. You'll see a character who's playing. You know, you will see your created band, as it were, if you've got. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But with the Tool gig, you don't see your band. Instead, you see this fucking weird kaleidoscope-looking design that's t- turning and changing colours and whatnot. And in the centre is this eye that just look keeps looking around. And it's like... And my fiance shrieked at that as well. She was like, oh my God, that, that is so, that's the eye from the album. What the fucking album it was, I don't know, but... She she just loved everything about this gig. Very difficult. Some of the songs were quite fucking hard, but for me anyway, but she really enjoyed it. So, yeah, long story short, we've been playing Guitar Hero for the past week and we've been, oh, brilliant game. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, <clears throat> My throat's starting to get sore. This is actually the second take of this same podcast. The first take was taking me one hour and 13 minutes and then I just deleted it and started again. And now I'm in an hour and 10 minutes into it and my throat's starting to forget. So I've basically been talking for two hours and 25 minutes and I'm starting to feel the fucking effects. I'm going to have such a sore throat tomorrow. Um, But anyway, so yeah, that's what I've been playing and beating. I guess the games I've beaten. Games that I'm currently playing, apart from Guitar Hero, uh, I've been playing 
um, a game called 80s Overdrive. Now, it's available on uh, Steam. I think it's also available on Switch. I think it's available on PS4 and Xbox One. I really don't know. But it's available on Steam at least, and that's the version I've been playing. And if you've played Outrun, the original, and if you've played Chase HQ, you know, any game like that, you'll be quite familiar with how this game plays. Um, it's uh, a very arcade-like uh, racing game where you race from start to finish in a sprint format. Uh, every now and then, cops will try and pull you over. You've got to avoid them. Uh, the more you play, the more difficult it gets. The more... Like, it, it's it's quite a, a fun arcade-style racing game that plays very similar to Outrun and Chase HQ. And I really enjoy it. And that's what I've been playing. I haven't played it in about a week because I've been playing Guitar Hero, but before that, for a full straight week, I've been playing that. I've still got a few more levels to do to actually roll credits, as it were. Um, I've been playing it for like... See, I've got this routine set up where I will play a AAA game in the morning for about two or three hours. And then I'll go make lunch. And then after I've finished eating lunch, I'll come back up and I'll play another game, a smaller game for like an hour. And Days Gone has been my morning game and 80s Overdrive has been my like lunchtime game, as it were, before I leave to go to do my day job, which is like from three o'clock till eight o'clock at night. And then when I come home me and the fiancé will play Guitar Hero together for an hour and then we'll lie down and watch TV. Uh, for the past week, though, I've instead of 80s Overdrive being my lunchtime game, I've been playing Guitar Hero. So, yeah. Um, so 80s Overdrive, it's like Chase HQ, it's like Outrun. It's like the two of them had a fucking baby and made this HD widescreen pixel art racing game. It's really, really fun. And it's very, very smooth because I'm playing it on a 144Hz monitor. And because it's the type of game that it is, it doesn't require any graphical prowess whatsoever. The game runs at a solid 144 frames per second, 1440p resolution. It looks crisp and just stunning pixel artwork. I love it. Really enjoying it. Great soundtrack. Highly recommend it if you're into any sort of retro aesthetic games with a modern touch as like a, it's a game that looks like it should run in a Sega Mega Drive but you know fine well it would never and uh, yeah like I said I've been playing Days Gone uh, finally got to play that um, it, beca- it came available on April's PlayStation Plus selection and I was waiting for that to happen for a long time I think it was available on PlayStation now but I missed out on it I could have been wrong about that but it's available on PlayStation Plus, so as long as I'm a member, I can play it as often as I like. And that's what I've been playing for the past two weeks now, and it's really, really good. It's amazing. Now, like, this is where the confusion comes with the whole fucking... Why Ghost of Tsushima didn't get Game of the Year, Days Gone came out the same fucking year, and nobody's arguing for that game to become Game of the Year. That game got quite low scores, which I'm quite shocked by. Uh, Days Gone's reviews are not that high. <coughs> now, don't get me wrong, the game isn't bad. It's good. It's what If you had a scale of bad, not good, okay, good, very good, and legendary or something like that you would put days gone between good and very good i personally think it's i I personally think it goes above very good i think it's a very very good game and uh it's i don't know what it is people didn't like about it and it confuses me because people don't like days gone but they like ghost of tsushima both games are quite similar in a way that's a bit hard to say like but Ghost of Tsushima open world action game with RPG elements thrown in Days Gone 
open world action game with RPG elements thrown in. Days Gone has side stories, uh, side missions. Um, Ghost of Tsushima also has side missions. You can do anything you like in between missions. You can go and collect collectibles. Uh, you know, on 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 reveal the map, clear everything on the map. Like pick up this many items in this area, this many items in this area. Move on to the next. <clears throat> Unlock more areas to uh, take rests. Ghost of Tsushima also has very similar mechanics. So why did Ghost of Tsushima, in comparison to Days Gone, get so much more love than Days Gone? That is what confuses me. And uh, I'm looking at an article on Reddit, and it's on the Days Gone Reddit. And someone said, did you enjoy this game, Days Gone, more than Ghost of Tsushima? And someone said, I'm in Act 2 of Ghost of Tsushima, and I honestly think it's kind of boring. I've been looking for a good open world game to keep me hooked, but Ghost of Tsushima isn't it. Combat is repetitive, and the story and characters are kind of bland. Days Gone is on sale right now and I'm kind of interested, but since it's also a Sony game, and af I'm afraid of the progression will be the same as Ghost of Tsushima. How is this game with the world characters progression and collectibles in comparison to Ghost of Tsushima? My personal opinion, very similar. Very, very similar. Now, there are different styles of games, like different themes. Ghost of Tsushima is obviously set in ancient Japan. And Days Gone is set in a post-apocalyptic version of the modern world with zombie-like creatures in it. Um, it's quite interesting. <clears throat> like, there's a few uh, comparisons to be made on it. But I, I, I don't get it. But I, I personally think that both games are as good as each other. But both games do nothing special in my books. Now, the only thing I like about Days Gone that it does well is the... Um, now, it, it says... It, call it what you want, Mr. Director, for Days Gone. I know I had a little bit of a run-in with this. This is... This this is one of those this is one of those situations. There's examples of people being really defensive about something before, like before getting even getting the context of what I've said, or just like, do you know what I mean? So, about when I first started playing Days Gone. I posted a screenshot, a photo of my television screenshot of the game, basically showing I've started this game. And I wrote, and I had just played maybe five minutes of it, and I noticed that the zombies are called Freakers. And I've seen plenty of zombie films, TV shows, and played plenty of different zombie games where I fucking know well that zombies never get called zombies. Even fucking Shaun of the Dead lampoons this. When someone says zombie and the other guy goes, don't say that word. What word? That Z word. Why? Because it's ridiculous. Now, that has stuck with me because it's fucking true. In any zombie IP, the zombies never get called zombies. So I thought that Days Gone was just another one of them. So when Days Gone, when I started playing it five minutes in, I tweeted another zombie game where the zombies are not called zombies. And that was that. That was the tweet, so to speak. Hashtag Days Gone. And... This is what I'm talking about with people def being really defensive for no fucking weird reason. Now... I got ratioed by a guy called John Garvin and he goes, Zombies are reanimated dead. Freakers are living beings. Definitions matter. Yeah, definitions matter, but at the same time, they're fucking zombies. They act like zombies. You know, they do act like zombies. They do. Calm down. But, um... Someone got really defensive about it. Now, I replied to that guy 
and said, I'm only two hours in, man. I don't know shit at this stage. Relax. And this girl called Rachel came in. Didn't know who it was. She's not related to anyone on this fucking tweet. And she goes, he wrote the game, dude. You relax and educate yourself on what you're playing. That baffled me. That baffled me. This is what drove me to come up with the topic on people being defensive over weird things. And I said, calm the fuck down. What a weird thing to defend. And then, like... It just annoyed me. It's like, why are you getting defensive about this? I made a blind, ignorant observation that I admitted to making. Yet you're still going to defend... I did not once say that I hated the game. I did not once say that the game sucked. And I did not once say that the, the zombies not being called zombies were a detriment. I'd rather they didn't get called zombies ever. Because it's just fucking stupid. But it turns out that John Garvin is the director of the fucking game. And that... Uh, for some strange reason, if you argue or debate with someone that created something that you're playing, watching or reading, you get this weird fan base that just jumps in and wear a shield like their fucking bodyguard and is like, you will never, don't you dare talk about my lord and saviour. That's what that, that's, that's what I get from that, that's what I take from that, you know? It's just, whoa, it's just fucking weird. People are fucking weird. And someone actually retweeted him and said just about everything that people get wrong about this game is that it is not a zombie game. But it is, though. You don't need to... Like, they behave like zombies. They act like zombies. We know they are infected living beings that are fucking brain dead in what they're doing, but they're still sentient. And they still need to feed, and they're, they're possessed, and they're ill, and they're, they're fucking whatever. You know? I get that. But I, they are, on the surface, they are still acting like God damn fucking zombies just whatever okay stop defending it just the least you could have said was keep playing and you'll see why they're called freakers say something like that do you know stop being so defensive it's weird just calm the fuck down <laughs> But, uh, yeah. So, anyway. So, where was I going? Oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I was talking about what it is about Days Gone that I actually really liked. Like, I was talking about unique features of games that Ghost of Tsushima had. And one unique thing about, it's not really unique in a way, but it's just an, it's a mechanic that they've thrown into Days Gone that I absolutely fucking love, and it's the it's the incorporation of uh, the the horde, as it were, the 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 zombie horde or the freaker horde, and it's so cool. It's it's like I love games that I prefer the running zombie as opposed to the staggering zombie, you know? And Days Gone has both, in a way, kind of. Like, it, not really, I suppose. When they're doing nothing, they're staggering, but when they see you and they run after you, they, there are certain types of freakers that will stagger run towards you. Like, they'll fall over the place trying to get to you. But then there's the freakers that are in hordes. They dwell in they dwell in caves during the the day and come out during the night and they are in packs. There are this group of I'm just gonna call them zombies, I'm sorry, but right? And they will if they see you, they will come running. 
and they come running in droves like this big wave of flesh just fucking tearing the road down to chase you it's fucking terrifying but I love it I absolutely love it it's so cool it's just I just love finding like a lot of people when they play games like this and they'll see a horde and they'll be like oh fuck that I'm out of here no I encourage it I encourage approaching them if I see a horde I'm stopping what I'm doing I'm getting off my bike which is another positive about this game that I'm going to talk about. I'm getting off my bike and I'm I'm sneaking up. I'm like, right, what creative ways can I do to take this horde out? And there's so much you can do. You can plant uh, bombs on the ground at various low spots of where you're standing, like line them up. Like I like to, I haven't really done it properly yet, but I know I can do it. I would like to lay um, proximity bombs next to each other in a vertical like so if I'm standing in one spot place a proximity bomb take a few steps back place another one take a few steps back place another one like for every six yards place one so that when I and oh I'm just I'm fucking excited at the idea of doing it I want to do it right now but just place all these bombs and just place more bombs at different spots and then stand, go around a little bit, like, come up, come back up to where the bombs are, but stay away from them because they're proximity bombs, we'll go boom if you can hear them, shoot one with a non-silenced gun or throw a grenade or whatever startle them, get their attention and just fucking tear it down in the route where your bombs are, let them come to you the second they get, oh my god, just watch it. Bang, 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 bang. They're just fucking chaos. Throw a grenade and a Molotov in there for good measure and then just mow the rest of them down with your gun. Just, that is a scenario I love because that game allows you to do that. You can be so creative in how you approach enemies in this game. And I fucking love it. It's, it reminds me of Metal Gear Solid 5 in a way. Where you can come up to an area that's filled with enemies. And some of them are random encounters. But some of them are established locations where you will find enemies uh, residing. And you can plan your attack. I love games that allow you to do that. And Days Gone gives you so much freedom to plan your attack. Very similarly to what Metal Gear Solid 5 allows you to do. You don't nearly have as much tools at your disposal like you do in Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, you don't have a helicopter coming in and fucking mowing them all down. But that's what I like. You have to, like, arm yourself with as much scrap as possible so that you can create all these contraptions. Now, I haven't even beaten the game yet or gotten it. I've not explored everywhere the game has to offer yet so I'm pretty sure there's more tools that I can use eventually and I'm really excited to do it. Um, so right now I'm absolutely loving uh, Days Gone and uh, there's more things about this game that I really like. Um, like for example the bike mechanic. The motorbike is a very important tool in this game. Um, it's probably the most important tool that your character will use in the game and that you have to make sure it's fully fueled before you go out on a run you have to make sure it's completely repaired um you have to make sure that your bike because if you if you run out of gas or fuel or petrol on your bike and you're in the middle of the fucking wilderness you've got to make sure that your bike gets to a petrol station or near a gas source to refill because otherwise you can't get your bike back you have to make sure your bike goes everywhere with you even if it runs out of petrol which means if your bike runs out of petrol you're pulling that thing with you you're you're dragging it with you i think that's what i've had to do anyway i don't know if there's any shortcut around that but you can't fast travel you can't go anywhere without it you need your bike and there was one occasion or two occasions where I ran out of petrol on my bike in the middle of a wooded area and there was a, a load of um, freakers nearby and I had nowhere to go. 
I was stuck here, so I had to take all these bastards out with very little ammo. The only infinite weapon I had that I could infinitely use was my knife. And it's not very powerful, at least early on it's not. So that was intense, but I loved it. I loved how the game can put you in that situation. This You can be so fucking helpless. And it makes me love the game even more that it has that. So why this game got such... I'm not going to say it got low scores, but it got lower than I think it deserved, in fairness. Highly underrated game. But there's a few things about Days Gone that bring the score down for me personally. And they're small things. <clears throat> they don't take me out of the game completely. But they're they're quite intrusive actually. In fact, they pull me in too much, but they're intrusive. For example, uh one very small thing is every time I go on the bike, every time you mount your bike, you turn the engine on, your headlight will always be on by default. There is no way to keep the light off. There is no way to have the light be off by default. And that kind of irritates me because you could get on the bike turn on the light and your light source is not uh, your torch, your light, your headlight, your lamp whatever the fuck it is you've got in your hand is not um, <clears throat> uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a con uh, cosmetic. It's not cosmetic it's very very mechanical. It's very part of the game. If someone sees your light they see you. If you're in the dark and they don't see you and you turn on your light, they see you. So it's kind of irritating. If I'm in an area where there's maybe a zombie that doesn't see me and I turn my light on, he could see me because my light's on. So it bugs me that when I go on the bike, I have to make sure I press down on the D-pad to make sure the light is off. And it's very difficult to, to do when I... I haven't found the button for it. I don't know if there is, but there is no button to immediately look behind you. So I can't look behind me to see the front of my bike with the snap of a button to see if the torch is on. I don't think there is. If there is, then I stand corrected, but I don't remember seeing it. <clears throat> I have to rotate the camera quite slowly to see the front of the bike to make sure the light is off. Because sometimes you can't tell. So... That's one small thing that is kind of annoying that I wish, just let me have the light off by default and let me turn it on by default. Because when you get in a car or a bike in real life and you turn the car on, your lights aren't going to be on by default, are they? No, you've got to turn that shit on yourself. Do you know? <clears throat> Can you imagine how much battery would be wasted if your lights were on permanently, even in, during the day? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know anything about cars or batteries or how they work, so <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. Um, and another thing that bugs me about Days Gone is like the way it handles giving you missions. Now, I'm all for um, authenticity or innovation, or not innovation, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, <clears throat> I'm all for, wow, I'm blanking on the word. I think it's innovation, isn't it? No, not innovation. Not innovation. Ah, oh, what's the word? I've forgotten the word. Do you know the, the term where you feel like you're in the game, you feel like you're in the world? It's not innovation. What's the word? Ah. Oh. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, I'm going to have to type it in because I don't remember. What the fuck is the word? Oh, the word. That word. Invest. No, it's not invest. Got it. Immersion. Immersion. That's the word. So there's aspects about the game that takes me out of the immersion. It, you know, that's that's the word I'm trying to look for. Um... And one of those are when you're 
So the game has loads of uh, settlements, maybe five or six, uh, four or five major settlements in the game. And that's where you go to do story missions for certain characters or some side missions for certain characters. And in any other normal game like this, you will finish a mission and if you've triggered, if you've unlocked new missions, it will come up on the screen saying new missions available at this location or something like that. Or a character will stand there in front of you and say behind you, uh, I have more missions for you if you want to come ch- take a look or I have more do- jobs for you if you want to come take a look. You know, so, so, something like that. You know, um, that's that's common. Um, but n- not in this game. This game does it differently and it's it takes me out of the immersion of the, the game. So, radio calls is how you get new missions in this game. So, you could finish a mission and then, like, I could be at a camp right? Um, a, 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 a camp where, a settlement, right? And I could finish a mission. And then I'll leave the camp. That same camp that I just left will radio me for a side mission, which means I have to turn around and go back to that camp to trigger the mission. Like, there doesn't seem to be any mechanic where a character can call you over like they would in an RPG, like I just mentioned. Like, not even a notification on the screen to tell you new missions available at this location. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. No. They have to radio you and talk to you to tell you that they need you to come back to the camp when you're ready to do a mission. Which means you have to stop, turn around, and go back. And it's annoying because sometimes it's done at the worst stupid fucking possible times. Which means... There was one instance where, and it's like, it made me think this was fucking not needed. You did not need to do this. I finished a mission, right? I finished a mission and I got on my bike and I left the camp. The moment I left the camp, I mean, give me, give me another 20 seconds before the game loads in the radio call to tell me that there is a new, like, So a radio call happens. The second I leave the camp, the radio goes, Deacon, that's the name of the main character in the game, Deacon, I need you to come back to the camp when you're ready. Okay, I've just left. You just spoke to me and now you want me to come back. Okay, fine. I'll turn around. I'll go back into the camp. Then it triggers a cutscene. And then that was it. The cutscene is all that happens. Once that fucking cutscene finishes, I'm back, no mission, back where I was. Okay, you've made me come back to watch a cutscene. So now I'm back on the bike, I've left. Deacon, I need you to come back again. Oh, for fuck's sake, I've just left the camp, you want me to come back again? So I get back on the bike, I go back to the camp and then I have to do the mission. And then I finish the mission, I come back, I leave, and the radio goes again, please come back. For fuck's sake, just put it on the fucking screen to tell me that there is a new mission available so that I can go back whenever I like. Not these fucking radios, because then it gets ridiculous, because if you've got multiple missions that you are having the option to do, you get multiple radio calls one by one by one. Like, one after the other. And that gets old really fast. So I could finish a mission, leave a camp, and I'm just going to say Settlement 1. Settlement 1 contacts me and goes, Deacon, uh, when you're ready, I've got a job for you. Okay? Okay, brilliant. End call. Next one. Hey, Deacon, uh, if you want, if you're ready, we've got some work for you. Please come back. Done. Next one. Uh, Deacon, when you get a chance, can you... It even gets to the point where Deacon, the main character, even fucking intrudes before the radio call even starts. So, Deacon, uh, if you're there, it's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is Deacon talking now. Let me guess, you want me to do a job? All right, okay, I'll be there whenever I'm ready. It's like, he knows that it's intrusive. And it gets even more irritating where 
I'm in the middle of doing a mission. So I'm driving to that mission or I'm driving back to start a mission, right? And in the middle of that, I'm getting radio calls telling me, we've got a mission here for you when you're ready. It's like, shut the fuck up. I'm sneaking up on some fucking zombies and you're sitting there saying, I need, I need you to take down this bastard that's been giving me trouble. Fuck off, I'm busy. It's like, shut the fuck up, just go away. <laughs> like... Oh, it's so frustrating. I'm trying to make my way to a certain location. I've got four or five radio calls coming in from people telling me they have jobs for me. Like, I understand the importance of immersion. But sometimes I just need the game to be a game. Just let it be a game. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to radio call me with it. It's almost as bad as Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 and whatnot. You know, I'm used to it because it's just that. That's just the game's niche. That's its thing. That's its bit. Where you could be in the middle of doing a mission on that game and you get a radio call and that radio call can go on for five minutes, which is a lifetime when you just want to get back to what you were doing. You know, but because I'm, I've grew up with Metal Gear Solid and I'm used to it, it's nothing to me. In fact, it's better nowadays because when I play Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, I just skip through the radio calls. I don't need to listen to them because I know exactly what's going on. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> and another thing that bugs me about Days Gone is, like, I'm all about accessibility in video games. But I do not like it when uh, developers take the piss around it. And there's two occasions that came up for me, and one of which is in Days Gone. So in Days Gone, there is an option to, in the accessibility options, right, there's one there that allows you to auto-complete QTEs or quick time events, which is, for some reason, greyed out on my game. And I got a little bit confused, so I went and did a Google search on why it's greyed out. I mean, if I want the option to do QTEs, why can't I do that? Like, autocomplete QTEs, which means you don't need to press a button during a cutscene if it asks you to. It just does it for you. <coughs> so, I looked it up, and it turns out that <laughs> the reason it's greyed out is because I'm not playing the game on easy mode. I'm playing on normal difficulty. So therefore, the autocomplete QTE is greyed out in the accessibility section. I'm sorry, but that's just wrong. That is so wrong. Having QTEs autocomplete should not be exclusive to easy mode. Accessibility options should not be tied to video game difficulty. I could desire a heavy challenge on this game, but I might have issues with reactions to QTEs. This is a very wrong thing to do. Nothing about accessibility options should be deliberately removed and passed off as a hidden feature. It should be an important mechanic that should be available from the get-go. You're insulting your community, like you're insulting your consumers doing this. Don't do that. You're making people that need it sound like they're stupid. You're making people that need it sound like they're not good enough to play the game. So because you, like, so, like I said, I could be fucking dynamite at the game. I could be able to pop off heads left, right and centre. But when it comes to watching cutscenes to have QTEs, I might struggle with that. I might struggle with that. I might not be, I might not have that part of the brain that, that sees that coming. Do you know? But I could be good at everything else. So why why do you think I'm automatically not good enough to play the game on a higher difficulty? Just because I have a struggle with that one particular aspect. Why does that need to be taken out? That's really insulting and I don't agree with that at all. And I suppose this leads me to things about games that I don't like. And it's, and it's to do with accessibility in video games. Because Days Gone is not the only game where an accessibility option is passed off as a fucking feature. Because in the game Dead by Daylight, the developer came under fire for uh, hiding, not hiding I suppose, that's a bit uh, 
like hiding a feature on the accessibility options, particularly color blindness. I think. Like color blind mode. They, they I'm trying to look it up here because I don't want to talk shite and have it be false. Okay. So, the developer of Dead by Daylight, fans of that game were asking for a colorblind mode. Because uh, a Reddit post, or someone said that uh, someone was having trouble playing the game uh, because he was slightly colorblind or he was fully colorblind or whatever. And he couldn't play the game in its current state because of because of this, because there was no colorblind mode. And uh, the developer did this thing that is ugh, a bit gross. It's the developer uh, was getting questions about it. Why isn't there? Uh, Uh, why wasn't there a, anything done about this or something like that? Why isn't there a colorblind mode option or something like that? And the developer got a little bit bitchy. I had a bit of a shitty attitude towards it. And it's got something to do with the fact that he said that he was getting sick of people constantly asking or something like that. He was making it sound like everyone was being a nuisance. And I don't agree with that in the slightest. Now, I wish I could go back and find it, but I don't think I'm I'm going to find it because this was, I don't know how far back this was. But I don't want to eat my words and talk shite about something that I haven't really fully looked at. I should have looked at this before I started the podcast. Okay, I found it. Um, okay, so someone uh, was asking the... One of the major daylight or dead by daylight developers, right? <clears throat> he was getting questions about the colorblind player base, about how they were ignoring uh, disabled player bases for years, and uh, they weren't answering people's queries about it. And it got to the point where one of the D dead by daylight developers responded to this on a Twitch stream, I think. And it was disgusting what he said. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can pull it up and record it, and uh, I'll see if it'll play back on this, on this, uh, this, um, this podcast. Now, this was back in January the 20th, 2021, so I missed this for a while, and then I actually commented on it as well, but I'll get back to that in a second. So this is what he said, if I can get the recording up. All right, JC, it's getting really boring just blabbing about colorblind mode all the time. We've heard it a million times. We know. Continuing to, to badger us about it isn't going to change anything. If it gets done, it'll get done when, we'll, when we have time to do it or if somebody decides that it's something should, that should be done. You know, we, we know that a lot of players want it. We know it's not a small number. We get it. Okay, so that's basically a shitty attitude to have when it comes to, like, appealing to your disabled fan base. Like, he basically said that it's getting really boring constantly going on about it. We've heard that a million times. Uh, continuing to bother us about it isn't going to change anything. Now, the bit that really bugged me was when he said, if it gets done, it'll get done when we have time to do it. Or if somebody decides that it's something that should be done. You shouldn't have the power to decide whether or not that's something that should be done. That is something for the players to decide. Because you, you have to appease everyone as possible. So because... So because someone who's colorblind tells you that they're colorblind and they can't play the game the way they want to play it, you you have to think whether or not that you decide that it should be done. No. The customer is king. The customer is always right. And you need to fucking listen to them. Now, I know I'm months away talking about this. I know it's an old story. I don't even know if they went ahead and fixed it in the end. They probably did. But 
the Dead by Daylight official page said that this is not indicative of the views of the team. We deeply apologise for any frustration or harm. So he got what was coming to him. You know, and then they go and they say, this is not how we wanted to reveal this, but we feel it's the right time. We have been working on a colorblind mode for some time now, and we are planning on a release shortly. And I said, it shouldn't have been a reveal in the first place. This shouldn't be a feature that you plan on surprising people with, like, surprise, look what we're working on. The moment you begin working on something as important as this, let people know immediately. If someone asks, you tell them. And I fully agree with that, wholeheartedly. Do not take the piss out of people. Do not hide that behind something that's a feature. It's not a feature. It's something like, if you're working on it, you need to tell people that you're working on it, or else you're just going to alienate them for ages. This shouldn't be something that you're working on and you're going to surprise it in a fucking trailer. That shouldn't happen. Colorblind mode shouldn't be a feature. It should be a fucking... If you're working on it, tell them. Tell them you're working on it. You know? Because that's not fair, keeping people that need it in the dark like that. Now, like I said, this was the January the 21st. So I'm over it. Everyone else is over it. But I just thought I'd bring it up because I hadn't brought it up on any podcast. So I just thought I'd bring it up now. But that is two reasons why accessibility in games is important. The Dead by Daylight reason and the aforementioned Days Gone reason. But, like, another thing about games that I don't like and it's not really related to Days Gone in any way. It's just something that I'd like to get off my chest as well, because it's just like, see when, see when you're playing games that allow customization, you know? See when you're playing games that allow you to customise your own character, right? Now, some games do this, others don't, right? And it just depends on the game. Basically, when I'm creating you, right, and you're there as a 3D model on the screen, do me a favour. Stop fucking moving around. Stop posing. Stop turning your torso around to check your your back out or your your when I'm fixing your beard or when I'm fixing the shape of your face. Stop looking around and feeling your fucking eyeball while I'm trying to fucking tweak the shape of your eyes. Stop it, right? They've been doing it like in the video game WWF Warzone. You could be trying to create a wrestler. Now, it's not nearly as bad, but you, when you try to create a wrestler on that, every now and then a wrestler will, will pose when you, you, you're trying to. But they only seem to do it once you make a change. And that's okay, I suppose. But in games like uh, Guitar Hero 3 and 4 and whatever the fuck it was, it was Guitar Hero that made me notice it. And I noticed that other games do this as well. When I was trying to create my character on Guitar Hero, they kept turning around and checking themselves out. Just stand fucking still. I'm trying to tweak the shape of your fucking ears. Stop feeling your ears. Like, you're intrusive. <laughs> Do you know, you're, stop interrupting me. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, man. Things in games annoy me. And video games annoyed me recently this week. There was a moment where I thought I would be able to play Rock Band. Well, not so much not play it, but I like to be connected to Xbox Live when I'm playing games. And any service, I suppose. I like to have the online infrastructure there. I like to be... I like to have the online economy, as it were, available to me. I like to check my achievements. I like to check the date on when I got the achievements. I like statistics. I like seeing who's online. When I'm playing Steam, I love pulling up the Steam UI while I'm in a game to check discussion boards on the game I'm playing. I like being around the infrastructure, right? And that goes with the Xbox 360 as well, or the Xbox One, okay? Um, my Xbox 360 kicked me out of Xbox Live there recently, and I wondered why for a while, like, 
it was like, why did it kick me out? So maybe my account had a, or maybe I thought Xbox Live was having service problems. So I checked the status of the service. So it's like xbox.com forward slash uh, status or service status. And it usually tells you about Xbox Live, what's working right now, what's not working, is the the online store broke for a while, is the network settings broke, well, it could be anything, you know, you might not be able to log in to check your friends statuses, whatever, or you might not be able to check your achievements, or you might not be able to play online for a few hours, you know, they let you know, and the service was up, everything was up and running, so it said. But, uh, so I, f- so I tried to sign in on my Xbox One and it worked. And then I tried to sign in and play a backwards compatible game. And it didn't work. It kicked me out again. Only on backwards compatible games or 360 games. Either on Xbox One or the Xbox 360. But the interesting thing there was when I was playing a backwards compatible game on the Xbox 3, or not on the Xbox One, the Xbox One was still logged in, but the Xbox 360 portion of it was kicking me out. So it was this strange thing of, I can utilise the Xbox 360 emulator, as it were, but not fully. It's not letting me check my achievements on it. It's not letting me check my friends list via that dashboard. So I was wondering for ages what it was, and people were saying, change your avatar, that'll resync your account, your profile, and change your display picture, that'll resync everything. And I'm like, yeah, that, that, that I would believe that. that. That is definitely one of the fixes that Microsoft recommend if you get this error message. But uh, it wasn't working. So I, I, I searched high and low, and I found one Reddit post explaining the same thing that I had a problem with. I mean, loads of people have had this problem and everyone had solutions for it, but this, this sol- these solutions weren't working except from this one Reddit post and it was interesting. So I, I looked at this Reddit post and the person had the same problem as me. And I'm like, right, let's see what solutions he was given. And it was interesting. So he complained about the thing. He couldn't download his profile. Like, I, 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 it kicked me out and people were recommending that you delete the profile and re-download it. And I couldn't even re-download the profile. So this one person on Reddit complained. And the first response he got, or at least I think it was the first response, it was two months ago anyway. He goes, do you have Game Pass Ultimate active in your account? If so, that is the problem. Depending how much time you have left, you can cancel it and repurchase it right after. And he said, thank you. He gave him an award, which is a Reddit thing to do. I don't know what it means. Um, and I'm like, what? So so I, I intervened two months later and said, so what are you saying? That I need to cancel my Game Pass subscription in order to sign into my 360? Do you mean turn off auto-renewal? Or do I need to not be subscribed to Game Pass at all? And he goes, cancel it and have no service at all. And then when you get to download your profile, you can reactivate it again. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, well, that seems a little bit bullshit. Because in my head, I'm thinking, so I cancel my subscription outright. And then once I download my profile, I can reactivate it again. So what, buy another subscription? So that's the thought that came into my head. So I said that to him and I'm like, so what if I have a 12 month subscription? Am I just out of luck at that point? And by that I mean, it's about 120 quid for a Game Pass Ultimate subscription. And that's just the, that's the subscription I have, not 12 months, but let's just say I did. So I would have to cancel that subscription, re-download my 360 profile, and then repurchase a 120 euro a year subscription. And I said that to him and he goes, You can contact support and they can help you with that. It's quite easy. So that was a non-answer for me. So I left it and I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't find anything. So I went back to the Game Pass Ultimate thing. I says, look, I'm not using Game Pass Ultimate at the minute. I am paying $12.99 a month for it, but I'm not using it right now. So I can afford to, like, it's going to lapse next week anyway. And it is. So I might as well just cancel it now and then wait until Friday and rebuy it again. I was going to rebuy it anyway. 
So I did that. And uh, I came across something that I never knew. If you cancel your Game Pass Ultimate subscription, at least on this in this case anyway, you can get a full refund of your purchase before the month ends or before your subscription ends. And it's processing my refund as I write this as I as I do this podcast. And I'm like, I didn't know it did that. So I have nothing to lose. So I cancelled my Game Pass Ultimate subscription and it has processed a refund for me. So it says, right, I'm no longer on Game Pass. So let me try and download my 360 account again. So I turned back on, what was it, Crackdown or something on the Xbox One. The 360 dashboard comes up. So I go to sign in, download your profile, right? Click on that. Enter your credentials, your email address and your uh, your password, okay? So I did that. And then, sure enough, fucking downloaded. Fully, completely. My account is back. How the fuck did that happen? Why did that happen? Why is that a thing? So, I said it to him. I wrote, I came back to Red to Reddit to thank the guy for the the fucking solution that I had. How the fuck did he think of it? So I said to him, now, I said, why did I have to do that? And how the hell did you or anyone find this method in the first place? Who found out to just cancel their Ultimate Game Pass account to make it work? And then I asked him, once I resubscribe to Game Pass, how long is it going to be before this happens again? Like, is this a tried and true method? And why is nobody talking about it if it is? And I said, nevertheless, I'm relieved and I'm happy, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And he came back and he goes, Ultimate Game Pass was never intended to work on 360. And I suppose, obviously, it's not. Since it includes a bunch of stuff that was never out when the 360 was the main console, like EA Play or Game Pass. So naturally, you can start to isolate all options. And the only clear one is an issue with either the account or the or the validation through services. And since the error indicated a subscription error, ooga booga caveman idea, do just get rid of the service. Now, the error for me didn't indicate a subscription error. So that was the bit that got me. Um, and then he figured that out himself. I don't know how he figured I, I, See, he said it was a subscription error, but it never came up for me. So maybe the same thing is included. And... He said to me that the refund when you cancel has been around forever. And I didn't know that. So, yeah, I got that working again. And I'm going to, once my refund comes through, I'm going to repurchase my Ultimate Game Pass subscription. And I'm going to see if it does it again. And if it does it again, then that's kind of bullshit. But something triggered it to happen. It wasn't just a case of I was playing it and then I got signed out and couldn't play it again. Uh, something happened where I went to try and download a piece of DLC for Guitar Hero th- uh, World Tour. And I went in to go to my purchase history and for some reason something about that triggered a problem where it just couldn't communicate and it was like, oh no, I don't know what to do. Sign him out. Sign him out. Don't let him back in. Can't fix it. Don't know. And that's when I couldn't sign back in or download my profile. So... Going into the purchase history of my account triggered that. So it was trying to get into the storefront. It couldn't get into the storefront. And maybe that's why. So, yeah, I'll maybe n- maybe never do that again. I don't need to download anything from my 360 again, so that's fine. But, yeah, that was a fucking pain in the arse. But, uh... Yep. Now... Let's talk about more recent things in the news regarding video games. And uh, I had a lot I could pick from, and I decided to pick this. And it's... uh, It's about Sony and them closing the store for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. And at first it was fucking bullshit like I was like this is fucking ridiculous you can't do that we've invested so much money into that storefront for you to just fucking rip it away and rip away all the games that you had on it for us to never get our hands on them going forward 
to just like it, it goes to show that everything is temporary and nothing lasts. You know, I fully believe in game preservation, but Jim Ryan, the head of Sony, at least Sony on the West Coast, doesn't agree with that. And this harkens back to that time when he was talking about uh, game preservation and he disagreed with it. And he said that, ugh, what did he say? He said, there we go. <clears throat> He said, when we've dabbled with backwards compatibility, this is Jim Ryan talking, when we've dabbled with backwards compatibility, I can say it is one of those features that is much requested but not actually used. How the fuck does he know that? Like, and then he goes, that, and I was at a Gran Turismo event recently where they had PlayStation 1, PS2, PS3, and PS4 games. And the PS1 and PS2 games, they looked ancient. Like, why would anyone play this? And that started a, 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 a fucking snowball effect of opinions leading against this guy, where we have all came to the conclusion that Jim Ryan doesn't agree with game preservation, doesn't agree with retro gaming in general, and thinks that the only way is forward. Don't get me wrong. The way forward is beneficial. We need it. We need to evolve in terms of quality of games and we need to improve and we need to move forward in terms of technological advancements. We get all that. But you can't just ignore everything that was there before. You need to be humble about that because if it wasn't for what was there before, you wouldn't fucking be where you are now. Think about it, mate. There is a lot of people that play games nowadays that are my age. The average gamer is between the age of 30 and 36 years old or something like that. We're in our 30s, right? So old games are huge for us. Old games have never been more popular, you know? Like, look at all the indie games that take inspiration from older games, you know? Look at uh, uh, Bloodstained, uh, Curse of the Moon and Bloodstained uh, Ritual of the Night. Both games taking heavy inspiration from older IPs. If it wasn't for those older IPs, you wouldn't have them. And those games are phenomenal. Look at Ukulele. If it wasn't for Banjo-Kazooie, you wouldn't have Ukulele. Look at Dark Souls. See if it wasn't for Super Met- or see if it wasn't for Metroid. If it wasn't for Metroid, you wouldn't have Dark Souls. Now let me think, of, just think about that for a minute, right? What is Dark Souls, right? Or Demon Souls? Let's just say Demon Souls. What is Demon Souls? Demon Souls is a rogue-inspired action RPG that takes a lot of emphasis and elements from what we know as the Metroidvania. Think about it. Think about how the world uh, out like unfolds the more you play. You know, paths connect, worlds connect, you know, eventually the world you're in expands and you can explore every inch of the place by taking shortcuts. Like, certain, certain things are not unlocked until you do certain things. Like, that's the way that game is and it's heavily, in, like, it's brought out from the core that is the Metroidvania and I suppose to some degree the roguelike as well. And if it wasn't for Metroid, we obviously wouldn't have Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, right? If it wasn't for Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, we wouldn't have Super Metroid. If it wasn't for Super Metroid, we wouldn't have Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And the rest is history. Because if it wasn't for Castlevania Symphony of the Night, we wouldn't have every other Metroidvania that you see today. We wouldn't have fucking uh, Hollow Knight. You know, we wouldn't have uh, Spelunky, I suppose. We wouldn't have um, Steam World Dig, you know, and we we wouldn't have Dark Souls. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't have fucking Shadow Complex. You wouldn't have those games if it wasn't for Symphony of the Night. If it wasn't for Metroid, right? So you have a lot to fucking have a lot, you've got a lot of, you need to have a lot of respect 
for old games. You can't just look at an old game and go, who'd want to fucking play that? Who'd want to play this? How dare you? How fucking dare you, Jim Ryan? How fucking dare you have that attitude, right? You're in it for the money. You're in it for the business, right? But you don't know fucking business, mate. Because you don't, like, where are you getting this idea that nobody uses backwards compatibility? Do you remember the fucking amount of outpouring satisfaction, the outpour of love from everyone when we found out that Xbox One was going to have backwards compatibility? Remember that. Remember that. Xbox has never been better. Right? Say what you want about its amount of exclusives and or lack thereof, right? It may not have a lot. But what it does is something that you fucking need to do, Jim Ryan. What PlayStation would... Fucking, I would love it if PlayStation did this, right? Yes, PlayStation 5 might play 95, 99% of the PlayStation 4 library. Yes, it might be able to do that, right? You had no choice but to allow that to happen. Because the PlayStation 5 came out when, like, we've never had so many fucking games that are disposable like we do now, right? Some people are just not finished with their PS4. Some people aren't even finished with their PS3s. Do you know what I mean? Some people aren't finished with those yet. So you need to allow them to play. Like, I suppose you've achieved that to some way with the PlayStation Now subscription service, which I could take or leave in a way. Like, I enjoy it that I can download a bunch of PS4 games and not have to worry about streaming them. And I am grateful that I have an internet connection speed that allows me to stream those games at as best a quality as it's going to get. But it's just, it's never going to feel quite right. You know what I mean? I am grateful that I am able to run these games in a way that I can, but I would prefer if I could download them and keep them so long as I'm a member. Or better yet, allow me to fucking buy them and play them on that console. The PlayStation 5 is the second most powerful game console on the market right now. And you still can't find a way to allow it to play PS1, PS2, PS3 games. Unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. You can blame the PS3 for that with its weird fucking infrastructure around it, whatever the architecture around it, whatever the fuck it is you did to make that thing you know, that thing was crazy, the 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 internal components of that console, because it was because of PS3 that we now are in the state that we are in in terms of backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 5. Like, you basically took everything the PS4 had, you put it into the PS5 and made it better. Basically, that's what you did. And your attitude towards old games stinks, because there is a market for it, and it couldn't have been proven so much than what happened with the store closure of the PS3 and PS Vita or what was going to be the store closure of the PS3 and the PS Vita. When you announced that you were going to shut down the PlayStation 3 and Vita stores around summertime, along with the PSP store, which is still going ahead, by the way. Which was so fucking tone deaf. I can't even, I couldn't even, can't even believe that you came to that decision. So what did you do? You announced it, and what happened? Everyone started panic buying. Everyone started panic buying all these old games, all these old games that you said nobody was interested in, you know. And it and it fired back into your face when you saw the numbers. You saw the numbers. You saw how well that your fucking company was doing financially when you announced this. I spent about 80 to 90 euro alone on PlayStation 1 Classics. I'm the chump that fell into that trap, but I'm glad I did because I have intended on buying PS1 games on that, but never even thought to do it because I thought I've got all the time in the world. I've bought a PS1 game here and there and whatnot, but never thought I'd need to hurry up. Well, when you announced that closure, I felt like I need to hurry up. So I did. I felt like I needed to rush into it. So I did. I bought like, I don't know if I can buy 15 fucking games. PS1 games alone. Games that I've always wanted to have 
conveniently. Some games I already own physically, but wanted to have them in a digital format for convenience, you know, to save on a digital memory card. I don't need to constantly, discs, whatever fucking yes, convenience, I want the option to play my games anywhere I want, right? You were going to take that away, right? And then what happened? You saw the numbers. You saw how well it was doing. You walked it back. You walked it back and it only made me fucking laugh. You fucking hypocrites. You know. You walked it back and you made a tweet, a fucking ignorant, an ignorant fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? Patronising tweet or article. So patronising. So fucking bullshit. I could smell the shit coming out of your mouth when I read this. When it said, when we initially came to the decision to end purchasing support for the PlayStation 3 and Vita, it was born out of a number of factors, including commerce support challenges for older devices and the ability for us to focus more on our resources and newer devices where a majority of our gamers are playing on. We see now that many of you are incredibly passionate about being able to continue to purchase classic games on the PS3 and PlayStation Vita for the foreseeable future. So I'm glad we were able to find a solution to continue operations. Like, this, the first paragraph is what made me laugh the most. Upon further reflection, however, we, it's, <laughs> it's clear we made the wrong decision here. So today I'm happy to say that we will be able to keep the PlayStation Store operational for the PlayStation 3 and Vita devices. The PSP commerce functionality will retire on July 2021 as planned, which is fine, perfectly fine in my books, because like the PSP is pretty obsolete at this stage. Um, but it made me, it, it, it's, it's, it reads so fucking ignorant and patronising, it's like, don't fucking give me that shit. You know why you kept the store up. Because you saw the money you were raking in, and you thought to yourself, oh fuck, if we, if we keep those stores open, we, we can probably keep making more money. It's fucking ironic considering you turned round to us, Jim Ryan, and you said that... Ugh, you said that nobody wants to play these old games, and here you are. Here you are, seeing the error of your ways unfold right in front of you. Seeing that people are interested in old games. You're seeing that numbers and you're thinking, oh fuck, maybe I should have fucking kept the stores up in the first place. Maybe people do like to play older games. What do you think, you fucking idiot? Ugh. What do you think? You fucking godforsaken moron. I'm glad, I'm, I'm thankful in a way that they're not closing those stores. It's the it's one of the reasons why I went and got the Jack and Daxter trilogy. Because that Jack and Daxter trilogy is quite pricey in a physical format. You know? And I wasn't going to buy the PS2 versions because why the fuck would I do that? So, I had an option. I could either get the PS2 ports on PS4, which apparently run terrible on PS4, or I can get the HD remastered versions that are on PS3 that run a lot better, are 10 times more improved, have got modern conveniences shoved in there, and uh, yeah, get them on PS3 digitally, which only cost me about a tenner, I want to say. I got the American copies, they were much cheaper that way. And then I bought a bunch of fucking PS1 games as well. So the total rounded off to about 90 euro or 90 dollars. Expensive as shit. I've actually made a, a Google Sheets file document on those games because uh, it's called PlayStation 1 Classics to Buy from PS3 Before It Shuts Down. And I've listed, I only listed about 20 odd fucking games, I think. It was like... Like 29, 20, 26 games. So the games I've listed that I intended on buying before it shut down was Bomberman Party Edition, which is simply just called Bomberman over here. Cool Borders 1 through 3, Distriga or Distrega, 
Destruction Derby, Fighting Force, Final Fantasy Tactics, Future Cop LAPD, Legacy of Kane, Bloody Roar, Bloody Roar 2, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, Medal of Honor, Medal of Honor Underground, Nuclear Strike, Pandemonium, Rayman, Rayman 2, Silent Hill, Sim Theme Park or Theme Park World, Soviet Strike, Siphon Filter 1 through 3, Wild Arms 1 and 2. Those were all the games I've intended on buying. Uh, and they all cost about 80 quid, and I've still got some more to buy. I've still got Cool Borders 1 through 3, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy Tactics, Future Cop, Nuclear Strike, you know, uh, Pandemonium, Rayman, Rayman 2, Silent Hill, Sim Theme Park, Soviet Strike, Siphon Filter 2 and 3. I've still got those games to buy, and they're going to cost me $93, or like 80-something euro. You know? They're still going to cut, so you're still going to make a shit ton of money, Sony, from that. And I think that's what it is. You know, you like old games, you need to prove to these companies that you're willing to pay money to play these old games. And, like, like show them that there is a market for it, because, like, we need to speculate to accumulate. You need to... Sp- oh, that's a bad fucking analogy, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's bad. We need to buy into this shit to prove to them that we are willing to play these old shit so that in the future they will learn that we need these games preserved. Because if you just sit there twiddling your thumbs and not spending a penny on this old shit and just playing it on a fucking Raspberry Pi, there is no data to show that you're playing them. There is no data to show that you're interested in these games because all you're just doing is saying, I'm interested in these games. But you're just saying it. But you need to show... Like, they go by data. They go by play data. And Jim Ryan's sitting there saying, well, according to her data, it shows that they are not playing the backwards compatibility program. Blah, 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 blah. Right, mate, like, listen to me, pal. You're fucking sitting there spouting shit like... Uh, we we ran what was it? We we ran some sort of shite that says that nobody uses the backwards compatibility program. What backwards compatibility program are you talking about, mate? Because as far as I'm concerned, Sony don't have shit. Because you said this back in 2017. You said this back in 2017 when you said that people clamoured for it but nobody used it. What numbers are you looking at? I highly doubt that Microsoft was letting you look in on that shit on theirs, because I guarantee you there's a market for it over at Microsoft, and there is definitely a market for it around Sony's fan base as well. So what are you talking about when you sit there and say nobody uses it? Where, 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 where are you pulling that out of? I'll tell you where you're pulling that out of, your fucking derriere, your fucking arse. There is a market for it. For fuck's sake, one of the games of the year was, what was it? What was the, what was one of the games of the year? Like, oh, ah, oh, fuck, I'm blanking on it. Um, I'm blanking on it. Like, y- y- <laughs> mm, I need to look it up. Bum, 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 bum. Hades won best indie game last year. Okay, that's not what I'd consider oldish style. So let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Uh awards. Hmm. Okay. Okay, bad example. But what I'm saying is is that games with a retro aesthetic fucking sell. That's why they still keep getting made. Why do they keep getting made? Because we love the retro aesthetic. Why do we love the retro aesthetic? Because we were brought up with retro aesthetics. Why were we brought up on retro aesthetics? Because that's what was popular around then. And it's still popular now because those are the games we grew up with. It's called Nostalgia Jim. It's called Nostalgia. And Nostalgia sells. Nostalgia makes money. Right? Why the fucking... Look at the mini consoles, the SNES Mini, the NES Mini, the fucking Mega Drive Mini, the PlayStation Classic. Do you know? They sell. 
the FPGA consoles, if, if that's what they're called, the, the Mega SG, you know, the, the fucking, the, the Mega, the Super NT, you know, the NT Mini or whatever the fuck it's called, you know, those clones, they sell, and they sell for hundreds. So don't sit there and tell us that there's no market for it. You took one look at Gran Turismo 1 and whatever, PS1 and PS2 games, and you thought that the graphics were... Sh you are the epitome of someone that goes by graphics over gameplay. You are a fucking president of C and CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, and you are biased towards graphics. Get a fucking life. Seriously. Well... I think, uh, I think I've went on long enough. How long is that? Two hours and a half. Two and a half hours. When really it's three and a half hours for me because I've been sitting in this chair for three hours and 25, 26, 27, 30 minutes. Because I did one hour of this podcast and then deleted it and started again. So I've been doing this for two hours and 25 minutes but it's really been three hours and 25 minutes and I'm... Fucking exhausted and I'm starving. But, uh, well, I think that's just about it then. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Dave talking to you on the GB podcast here on GB Gaming, where video games come first. If you want to see more, you know where to find me. It's www.youtube.com forward slash gamerboy forward slash G-A-M-E-R-B-H-O-Y. Find me on YouTube. Just search Gamer Boy Gaming or GB Gaming. I'm there somewhere. Find me on Xbox Live. It's Gamer Boy 89. Gamer space boy slash 89. Don't forget the H. You want to find me on PlayStation? It's Gamer under slash boy under slash 89. You want to find me on Steam? It's Gamer Boy. Space. Gamer space boy. I'm on Twitter at GamerBoy89. You're not getting my Facebook account. <laughs> um, obviously, if it's just the podcasts you want to listen to, they show up on SoundCloud and they also eventually show up on YouTube as well. I do plenty of content. I do reviews, live streams every so often. Mostly reviews. My latest review was Road Rash 3D. Go check it out. Again, that's youtube.com forward slash gamerboy, G A M E R B H O Y. Again, this has been Dave talking to you on the GB Gaming Podcast or GBG Podcast, whatever you want to call it. Here on GB Gaming, where video games come first. Thanks again, and I'll see you whenever I see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Stay safe out there. You know, wear your mask if you have to. You know, the, just be safe. Don't be a dick. And be nice to people. Thanks very much again. See you later. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.